the last panel was a lot about regulation and governance. And so given your background in legal compliance, I'd love to hear a few things from you. I mean, no one wants to be the bad guy or the bad guy, bad gal and tell people, no, you can't do this. But in legal and compliance, uh, we need people um, to help get the chain started. So while most people up here are, are producing outputs or producing product for, that becomes usable, folks like Dara from FTI are behind the scenes getting things prepped and worked properly from inception so that things can be done in a compliant way. And if that can't be done, then none of the product can be generated. So maybe you can talk a little bit about your experience with the legal comp compliance area. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I am at FTI right now. I sit basically in compliance operations. That unit focused specifically on data and models. And my career trajectory has been interesting. I've been a data lawyer since before that was a thing. Um, it first started out getting data sets from countries that didn't allow the, um, the export of data or dealing with complex data sets that are subject to export controls. And then I started to see people asking questions during due diligence or divestitures about who owns the data, is this valuable, and trying to get some, some real understanding of what the value of data was. We then started to see the rise of data aggregators. And so I've worked on both sides of this business. So I started out working for sellers. And a good way to understand um, that role is that a seller of data is creating a product. It's a, it's a product council role. You know, is the product fit for use? Can we make certain representations? Can we make certain warranties? And that's been true in financial services, in healthcare, in pharma, and actually in heavy industry for a very long time. Um, those industries have really needed data to really advance their own products and business cases. In this industry, it's, it's interesting. Um, data has increasingly been subject to regulatory scrutiny. Um, both directly through, for example, the SEC's programs on alternative data, but also increasingly as firms are using this data to make investments, they are talking about that in their public filings, and that needs to be true. So there's two levels of diligence that needs to happen. It's pre-acquisition, and many firms already have legal and compliance firms that are reviewing the data to make sure that the representations in the contract are correct. Some are also starting to do post-acquisition diligence to make sure that the data continues to conform to the original representations, but also as the regulatory landscape is changing, privacy laws are changing, that the quality of the data remains consistent. So I know that a lot of uh, data science teams were reporting that certain consumer originating data sets really stopped operating the same way after 2020, 2021, and it's because the originating sources had made a lot of changes to the way that data was acquired, and it was influencing the composition of the data set as people were starting to comply with the CCPA. So also as companies are starting to create more novel and homegrown products around the data, the requirement for additional ongoing testing is increasing, usually not only to be compliant, but to ensure that their own products and own use of it are fit for purpose. Dara, um, we've seen a ferocious appetite for content in the LLM world, AI world. And so can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing there in terms of people seeking data, you, you know, your customers ensuring that their data has proper privacy, uh, requirements met, um, anything along those lines? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer your question a little bit differently. Sure. Right? Um, I think right now, particularly with generative AI and a lot of the corporate use cases, I think we're still in an era of, of real immaturity around really identifying uh, value-based use cases for it that are actually actionable in corporations. So taking a longer term lens, right, where I think this is going is particularly for compliance and compliance operations, which is where I sit. When the technology gets worked out, when the business cases get worked out, I think what we're going to start to see is really an acceleration of the shift left movement. And what I mean by that is we've started to hear about embed cybersecurity and design, embed privacy by design, embed privacy engineering by design. Um, a lot of what I'm working on with clients, due to the complexity of some of the things that we've heard about, um, the amount of energy invested in the creation of these products, 
we are starting to see a replication of manufacturing quality control measurement, like measurable metrics, into knowledge-based work and an automation of that type of work. So I reflect that my business of legal and compliance is messy, it's time consuming, it's expensive, it's slow, there's not a velocity there, and the activities are not always correlated to risk, and then to expand that across all of the different operations associated with cleaning data sets, embedding data sets, creating products, there will be, and I'm starting to see, real interrogation around bringing these processes earlier on into the model and embedding them and having the products develop red flags and self-report to be able to do real-time compliance. And that's gonna be particularly important when we do start to have generative AI models that are really subject to drift and bias in a variety of real-time configurations. So I'm starting to see conversations in which people are starting to really operationalize compliance operations, and it's very welcome. It, so it sounds like maybe versus five or 10 years ago, people are planning a lot better for what they're building. So whereas years ago, if you build something, there, there, there could be unintended consequences of the data it spit out and the types of data it was using. Kirk, did you have a comment? You, you looked like you were uh, ready to chime in there. Well, I was just gonna ask, um, what do you think about sort of uh, over the next couple of years, um, a federal oversight of or, or regulation of the space and will that be helpful uh, to the standardization of compliance um, on shift left um, or do you see the organic bottoms up to be um, you know sort of sustainable in the current yeah. setup so it's unclear to me whether or not there will be a federal regulation and where we have seen sort of global regulations in the EU, they've lacked standards, right? There's actually no standardization around the concept of privacy by design. Not even NIST has it, not even ISO has it. So I actually think that it will come from a bottoms up because even if there is a standardization, I just don't think that there's the technicity or the techniques yet to do that. So I think it's going to be some of the biggest drivers that need to make their product safe. And I think safety has really been focused on consumer-based safety, but there's a real incentive for organizations where this is their primary way of driving revenue to make it safe for their own balance sheets. And so I think that's what's going to happen more likely. If there is regulation, I think it'll be a component of it and not end to end. It does seem unsustainable to have all these state by state regulations around data. I mean, it's impossible to keep up with. And so the, as you enter data sets, particularly in healthcare, where, where there's very, very, very sensitive things, it, it, it's really almost untenable to manage it. Yeah, well, it's not only the data sets that need to be managed, it's the models, it's the integration of the two, it's the integration with the hardware. All of this actually needs to be integrated in a way that can be tested for performance, for accuracy, for reliability. We don't really have standards around reliability yet, so I do think that that will start to emerge. And I think that companies are investing so much in the creation of this that they're going to want to know that there's real longevity to their investments, and that will come um, through that. So compliance testing, I think, will actually start to be less about regulatory compliance than to an organization's own internal benchmarking for um, economic performance. 